What's up, guys? Welcome to local band Smokeout. Smokeout. Any genre from, from anywhere in the entire world. I, I want to hear your music. Ladies and gentlemen, Harley of SpaceConcert.org and BandRuption.com in the belly! Yeah, hell yeah! Oh. <laughs> What's up, buddy? How are you What's doing, up? brother? How have you been? Yeah, not bad. Yeah, just been, you know, working on, on the, uh, the project here, Band Eruption, and uh, been helping out with uh, Yeti Valhalla still, one of our official artists right now. Yeah. We we love Yeti. Yeah, like we love Yeti on this show. I, I have I have so many questions for you. Uh, I guess I will start with at what point did bandruption.com become space concert and and what was your thought process behind that that procedure? Right. Yeah. So we uh, we switched it up about a month ago, and this is because uh, band eruption is basically uh, uh, the core product is software that um, people can use to promote music. And the space concert project is like an annual community building event that's attached to, uh, you know, the band, band eruption uh, project, which, you know, is basically like a membership project. And so, so this is why we needed to separate them. I guess say it like this. So, so let's say there's some people watching right now that do not know what band eruption or space concert is. Rewind me all the way back to the beginning and and why do you need their music? How can they get involved? Nice, yes. So what we're trying to do is um, we're trying to get, you know, basically we're doing guerrilla marketing for music. And what we're gonna be doing is sending 30 uh, pieces of digital art into space and streaming live from this spacecraft and then recovering, uh, basically, you know, bringing that small spacecraft Back. When, we're, when we say small, we really mean tiny. Like I had a, a cube satellite on one time when I interviewed with you. And basically, uh, yeah, we're going to be streaming from space and overlaying music, you know, premieres of music videos um, on the live feed. This is going to be a ticketed streaming event that also has in person um, counterparts, which are, you know, more expensive to attend. And yeah, there's going to be just A through Z opportunities for music artists to basically like get exposure for their music and, uh, you know, sell merch, sell sell CDs or whatever it is they're trying to do, uh, sell concert tickets for other events. As the as the creator of the event, I know you've probably explained this to so many people as, as someone that's like watching in chat. It sounds so advanced to me. Could my could my small time band that has a thousand monthly listeners on Spotify or less even be involved in one of the thirty bands? Because you said thirty bands are going to yes. be picked for this. It, can yes. can can my smaller band be involved? Yes, it's designed to make sure that ten at least ten of the thirty are up and coming music artists and. We have some, you know, we have some measurements that we use to define that, but basically it's like artists that aren't signed, that don't have a big following. So this would very much, you know, a thousand followers or subscribers would very much fall into that, you know, a group of 10. And basically the way the way they're going to get in is helping with like uh, on, online, creating social media buzz via a music tournament. And, you know, so it's a, it's like, partnering and promoting them and the Band Eruption Space Concert Project, and then basically getting voters to vote, and then the winning the winning bands end up getting those 10 slots. Tournament, you say? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, so how does a band get their own NFT? Because I know you've told me off, off stream that like there's NFTs involved, and band can, bands can have their own NFT. Like, how does that process work? Right. So this is, yeah, basically we're kind of borrowing from some of these like bigger festivals that have done this pretty successfully with NFTs. Like uh, you might think of like Tomorrowland or Coachella. Uh, Coachella, I'm hesitant to mention that one because there's been some problems, but Tomorrowland would be a really good example of an NFT collection that delivered to the, the people that bought them and led to them having like exclusive member benefits to get like er early access to buy concert tickets, for example, or, you know, access to events that only members can 
go to. And what we're doing is we're making software where any band can design these kind of NFT memberships for themselves so that they can basically have like their mega fans be closely, you know, uh, involved with with promoting their music and basically, you know, getting to make sure those those fans get to go to the shows, get first pick on the tickets and everything. That is crazy cool. I still to this day don't really understand how NFTs work, but I want one. <laughs> it just sounds cool like to have that thing. Uh, when do you anticipate this actual concert going down post the tournaments, decisions have been made, these are the 30 we're sending up? When do when you anticipate all of that happening? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we are like looking at next year right now. Um, it was originally supposed to be 2024. Um, um, we're looking at like about a year out or perhaps a little bit more than a year. Um, there's a few reasons for that. Part of it is um, the tournament itself will take a while. And then also lining up the basically the sponsors, enough sponsors, because um sending stuff into space and especially actually bringing it back and recovering it is pretty um a, a bit pricey but it can definitely be done with um the sponsors but i'm sure you know you and, and any like music artists here are familiar with how like it's a chicken or the egg problem it's like getting people to sign up to go or like t- ticket buyers versus getting the sponsors it's like you got to go get some signups and then you can get more sponsors and back and forth like that so that's the biggest throttle is there anything that uh, you need help in regarding that that portion of the sponsors? Or are you in particular looking for, like, what you're doing is so astronomically huge. Like, I don't know if, like, the normal average Joe knows the sponsor you're looking for. Like, what are you looking for in the sponsor world? Yeah, we probably, I mean... Um we need some bigger sponsors for sure. Um, you know, like if we had large corporate sponsors, um, but I think there will be opportunities later for smaller sponsors. So, yeah, I mean, I think the way that the average person can help right now is like spreading word about it. And then basically if you are a music artist, like signing up, or if you, you have friends that are music artists to sign up and then basically participating in the actual, uh, uh music tournament that we have that we have going on social media pretty soon here hell yeah me and harley are actually really good friends we've hung out before we've drank together we've 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 enjoyed bands together now that i've drilled you sir how are you doing how is life where are you in the world right now (laughs) yeah i'm good i'm in la and uh i will be uh back in tokyo late june and be there for a while and um yeah we're gonna be doing some more like grounded stuff over there with some bands like uh you know helping run merch tables and actually we're going to be doing some of some of the initial like nft product uh, prototypes basically with some bands there um testing out like how this works um and making sure that when it you know becomes widely available to anyone that signs up that it, that all the bugs are already gone how uh how's yeti doing yeah is it, they're doing good. They has a, a big concert coming up late July where actually uh, they have like their original basis from Love Bites is going to yeah, be Yeah, you're telling me, you're telling me about that. That's crazy. That's huge. Yeah. Miho is going to be there. Uh, she's playing for them. And then uh, drummer from Sex Machine Guns, which is another, it's like another Japanese metal band. And yeah, and he's going to be touring again in November uh, in Japan. And we actually have an animation series we're making. So that's the other thing. Ben Ruffin's like managing an animation series that we're making that will be based on Yeti Valhalla. And that's going to be freaking cool. We're going to, you know, it's going to be something like a crossover between Metalocalypse and Rick and Morty. That sounds like a must watch for sure. (laughs) Especially (laughs) if it involves Yeti because he's he's crazy. He's a party animal. I get the Metalocalypse madness. Yo, that, that sounds like a win right there for sure uh what you go to to japan so often man is it is it mostly like business related trips like are you going out there and like venture capital seeking or simultaneously just supporting bands and finding bands that you want involved in bandruption.com and spaceconcert.org while you're out there like what is what is your nine to five when you land and like this is my daily routine in tokyo today 
Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a lot of the stuff you mentioned. Like, a lot of what I do there is, like, trying to get more musicians involved. And, um, you know, and then fun, which is just going to concerts, something I want to do anyway. So that's what's pretty cool about this project is, like, when I'm going to try to, like, you know, uh, recruit music artists, it's, it's, it's like going to a show, which is something I would want to do anyway. And um, so, yeah, honestly, I spend a lot of time going to concerts when I'm in Japan. Um, I, I do a little bit of like the traditional, you know, uh, sightseeing stuff, but most of it's very much related to music and, you know, networking with the music community there. Um, I have, you know, I have a few like industry connections over there as well. I, I don't really try to raise capital in Japan, not yet, but yeah, it's more about um, the music community stuff. I only ask because it seems like you're there frequently and you have talent that you've pulled from there. And it, it seems like there might be, you know, a wallet <laughs> at some point. I don't, I don't, know, I don't know. But uh, what do you do on a day off? Like, uh, aside from hanging out with me and going to see Bandmade and supporting artists here in LA and Anaheim and whatnot. But what do you do on just a fun day off, Harley? When when you're not working on on all the crazy stuff you're working on? Yeah, I mean. Uh... I like to hang out, hang out with my girlfriend, like do nor you know, usual stuff, hit up some roller coasters, theme parks, um, stuff like that. You know, go to the you, you got the six flags season pass? No, no, nah, not yet. I um I have universal uh season pass, but okay. that's the only one. I have a six flags pass. We should we should hang, but uh yeah, I need to get the universal one. Um did you did you want to do any trivia today? I know we've had it a couple times, but I didn't know if you I didn't even ask, but do, do you want to do any trivia today or you just want to keep it professional and, and space concert? I brought this. I brought this. Oh, so you I, did? I didn't, I didn't you know. did bring it up. Oh, He's been here before. He's been here before. All right, what are we thinking? <laughs> what are we thinking trivia wise this this go? Oh, am I picking? Yeah, it's yeah. You get the pick. It's my job is to stump you. Oh, okay. Uh, how about Rick and Morty? Heard. Uh, Watch that show. I'm gonna go with the. Uh, this one sucks, by the way. The ass blaster. <laughs> that sounds violent. Rick, it's it's uh it's not too bad. I have ones that are worse, but it's it's an immediate little little sting singe, if you will. Uh, let's see, Rick and Morty, uh, we'll go, we'll go season three. What do you think about the, the new Rick and Morty voices, by the way? I haven't watched it, uh, yeah, I haven't watched the newest ones, to be honest. Uh, yeah. Neither have I. I have not watched them either, so. Um, is there, is there any, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, go go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna ask, how does the criteria selected for the other twenty bands out of the thirty for for the space concert? Uh, so the the other, I mean, so the other, the idea behind the other bands is probably um, th these are gonna be like bigger name bands to you know something like he headliners or mid tier. Um, so these bands are gonna be um, the ones that might draw a lot more people. Uh, essentially so yeah it's but um yeah we don't have defined criteria it just uh we we more or less focused on the the 10 you know up and coming bands to make sure that there's you know these guys aren't getting like uh banged out or whatever like we want um yeah, this is very much about making sure that you know new artists get new exposure that's actually the whole mission behind band eruption is to you know create ways for to get your music out of the the pile in the digital world you know like um like one thing i mentioned a lot is is about how like i'll subscribe to bands on say like spotify or youtube music and if they're not already famous like the odds basically those those apps will never randomly play those bands uh or even when i try to type in the you know type their name into the search bar it won't even suggest their name and i'm like i'm subscribed to these guys and you're, you're, you make me work so hard just to listen to their music and that's the problem right it's like how do you totally get exposure problem. when all the cards are stacked against you so it makes sense i have that problem all the time on youtube like i'll type the the artist and the song name and it's i still won't be able to find it and and it's, it depends like what what you're on why you can't find it but yeah that is an issue um is this is this something 
last question and then I'm ready for the first trivia. But it, is this, when you say like space concert, so this is like simultaneously casted, like let's say X band has a rehearsal space and they have the ability to like live cast from this rehearsal space. That is what is going to be projected in space for the concert. Uh, uh, no, now on that, no. So that what's being uh, live casted is the footage from space. Um, but we're basically going to be layering like videos that the, the band or music artist has already submitted to us. I think, you know, that's already challenging. And then basically to, to try to like live stream and, you know, coordinate with like a spacecraft. This is maybe later, maybe like, because we're going to be doing this every year. Um, so maybe later we can do something like that. But for the first one, the first iteration, just a, a video. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. But my job's to stump you. Here we go. Rick and Morty <laughs> trivia. Season three, episode five. Rick takes Jerry to an alien resort. But there's an extraordinary safety feature. What is the extraordinary safety feature regarding Rick taking Jerry to the alien resort? Oh, uh, extraordinary safety feature. That's what it says. I don't know. Uh, um, I don't. I don't know. This is. I don't I'll, know. This I'll, I'll give you a slight hint. He takes him to a alien resort that is protected by something. Uh, an anti Jerry screen screening machine. You think it would be, but no. <laughs> Enjoy the hot sauce. I'm gonna suffer <laughs> with you. Don't worry. It's protected by an immortality field. Meaning, if anyone leaves the field, they are instantly resurrected. Or, I'm sorry, if they die within the field, they're instantly resurrected. So in that episode, if okay. you die within nice. the field, uh, <laughs> so cheers. Let's do some. Let's do some hot sauce. Cheers. Ass blaster for me. Cheers. Franks, just regular. <laughs> Enjoy your Franks. Oh, uh, yeah. Not as ass blasty, but, you know, maybe. Maybe later. <laughs> yeah, that one's, uh, you don't want that. You don't want that. Woo! Harley, what's a, what's a band that you've heard recently that we've never jammed in the show, or you don't think we've ever jammed in the show that we you think we should know about? Um... Yeah, I've been slacking on the show lately, but uh, so I just heard of one a couple of days ago called Nikki. I mean, this is out of Japan to another, you know, it's like a girl rock band, uh, N-E-K-I. They're, but yeah, there's, I guess the basis is a big deal, um, but I heard one song and I didn't, I didn't hate it. Yeah, it's not bad. N-E-K-I? Yeah. Let me cue it up when we get out of here. Get, there it is right there, right? That first one? All right, yeah. cool. Oh, I have jammed it. It says I got the thumb up. So somebody, probably you, showed it to me. Um, oof. Mouth is on fire, bro. The ass blaster is <laughs> no joke. <laughs> what, what are the, like, is there, like, any logistics you have to clear with, like, NASA or something to be able to pull off something like this? As far as, like, I need this realm of, Earth's atmosphere free. I don't know. Like, I feel like getting something into the Earth's at or into space requires some kind of like clearance with NASA or something. Like, what are what are the logistics to be able to clear this? Yeah, I mean, it uh, it, it depends exactly how you do it. Um, but basically, what we're doing is we're ride sharing on launchers that are already going up. You know, it could be SpaceX or, or another, you know, company like Blue Origin or, um, and they're already sending a rocket up, they have extra space, and then they basically, they will let you send other stuff up. And then there's companies that are already selling, sending like 
a small satellite or spacecraft up, but then they have extra space. So you're kind of doing Uber on this little satellite. And then, so the, the short version of that is those guys take care of all that. They're, they're called payload brokers. And basically like, yeah, you gotta, you gotta, they, they gotta explain, like, make sure that we're not just leaving space trash up there. And, you know, there's gotta be like, uh, basically, wait, 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 wait. Oh, no. space um, trash. Something. So, like, someone's gonna spend yeah, some, someone's gonna spend like a million dollars to send a rocket into space just to just to unload a Sunday pickup of trash. Are you are you well, fucking I mean, kidding me? Like, that's like like that's, a for real yeah. check on the boxes. Yeah, I mean, this is actually a real issue. Like, a lot of people have have been spend, sending stuff up there, and then it runs out of battery, and then it becomes space trash basically because it doesn't. You know, it's just floating around up there, and there's no way to get it to come back to Earth. Um, I never thought about it like that. So the government started enforcing these these rules where you have to have you have to show how you're going to get rid of it. You could either send it off where it's going to go out of orbit, orbit, maybe into the sun, or you got to deorbit it and make it burn up. But you can't just leave it there for you know. So forever. that was that was in like your manifest, like your plan of how to get it back to Earth. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, we we actually want to recover our payload because it's going to be art that we want to then auction. Right. But, um, yeah, if you're not going to recover it, you should probably just burn it up. You just put it at an angle where it, you know, it just gets extremely hot until it melts and disintegrates, just like a comet. This is so crazy, bro. You're so smart. I'm just a stoner, so I... <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I, that's why I'm like fascinated asking you so many questions. Um, but I do want to try and stump you one more time if we can. Rick and Morty, the ABCs of Beth. Beth mentions that as a child, she used to play in a, in, in a fantasy land that she assumes was imaginary. Rick tells her, this place is real. What is the name of the place? that Beth is referring to. Yeah, there's no way I'm gonna get this, but yeah, I know I, it's like, I don't know, Beth world, <laughs> Beth, Beth universe. <laughs> it is Fruity Land. Fruity Land. Fruity Land is the answer. That was Beth's uh, childhood fantasy land, Fruity Land. And it really exists in the Rick and Morty universe. The double stump. Uh, uh, Harley, is there, is there, first of all, what shows are you catching in the near future before you go to Tokyo? Hopefully. Shows right now? Um, yeah, honestly, I don't have any schedule right now before going to Tokyo. Are you a fan of sure. horror movies? Yeah, I like some, yeah. There's something really cool that I'm going to on uh, on June 1st, and I have nobody to attend with. If you're interested, it's called Monster Palooza. It's in Anaheim, maybe. It's in that vicinity, somewhere over there, Anaheim, LA-ish area. But uh, it's got like uh, the the actor that played Hellraiser. Anyway, if you have any interest, please join me. Um, it's a cool place to just meet all kinds of yeah. actors that. Uh, we're involved in horror movies. I know that the guy that played Shaggy, Fred, Five Nights at Freddy's, Scream, Matthew Lillard's there, uh, the Terrifier people, blah, blah. But uh, I just think that would be something fun if, you, if you're interested uh, in tagging along for that one. Nice. Yeah, I mean, it's a definite possibility. Cool. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, I don't know the next time I'm seeing... I did see Baby Metal at, at Sick New World, bro, and they crushed it. I wish it could have been. It was it was a good time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Fle I was... It, yeah, I was... It's too bad I missed that. <laughs> we nerd out <laughs> on, on J-pop and J-rock bands for those watching, like, uh, on the side, off stream. <laughs> but, uh, dude, you're, you're awesome. I love you. I'm excited about what's what's happening with Band Eruption, but, but really kind of... Bigger than that is, is spaceconcert.org. What's going on there is, is next level in comparison, I feel. And uh, I think the tournament aspect with the 10 bands is a really, really cool angle. You, you got your 20 big ones. We get it. They got to promote. They're the big boys. I understand. But having the 10 little guys involved, awesome, is so cool. Um, especially because it's kind of like anybody can kind of be involved in that that makes music. 
Um, there's no genre restrictions, or are there? No, uh, no, no genre restrictions. Uh, That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Hell yeah. Well, uh, Harley, I love you, sir. Thank you for for swinging by again and kind of explaining more of the process of of what's to come regarding banruption.com slash. I kind of has a. I have to say it as like a duo because they're kind of like two separate things that like try force somehow with with harley at the pinnacle <laughs> to like make sense is like how i explain it to people does that make no, sense when yeah. i say that to you yeah sort of i mean it's the space concert like we, we just gotta i don't know nasa did some project that they called the space concert which was absolutely not a space concert and so we have to distinguish ourselves from that but it is you know yeah it is the space concert and then basically a band eruption is basically managing it and making it happen i feel like earlier <laughs> just to just to get an opinion in real quick i i mentioned earlier about the bands playing down here but it's projected into space and i feel like that's very doable if that's an avenue that you do want to pursue, so the bands are actually like playing on Earth from a rehearsal space, but Starlinked or however. What's your thoughts on Starlink, by the way? Starlink? I I mean, yeah, I I don't know like a lot about it, but I think generally it's an awesome project. I mean, if if I ever got super rich and, and I could just like float around on a sailboat and still have internet in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, that'd be freaking awesome. Isn't um, it? That's Isn't what it? I think about when I see it. I feel like this should have been invented <laughs> years ago, but yeah, I've I've actually like considered looking into Starlink just uh just because it seems like it's the future and Elon usually wins with whatever he wants to do, so I don't know. But um dude, this is a pleasure, man. Thank you for for, for swinging by. I'm going to make sure this is on YouTube tomorrow morning. And uh, if you guys are watching, I'm telling you, just take a second, open up a second tab, open up another screen. If you're on mobile, whatever you got to do, type banruption.com. And then pause, open up another screen after that and type spaceconcert.org. Trust me, you'll be happy you did. Do your research. This is going to be happening in the future. And uh, Harley right here is in charge of all of it. He is the 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 brains, the genius involved in the whole process. And uh, he's a good buddy of mine. And I appreciate you, sir. Thank you for explaining what is somewhat confusing to someone that kind of doesn't know. Like if, if you're just somebody in a band that, you know, is just jamming, gigging, it, it's a little confusing on, on the process. But having you here makes it a lot more easier to explain. And you did explain that. Yeah, thank you, BG. Yeah, and always appreciate you too, man. Uh, it's I'll, I'll, I'm sure I'll be chatting with you in the near future. Harley of SpaceConcert.org! Yeah. Yeah. Cheers, brother. Thank you.